Um, Friday the 26th of April uh, 2019 um, wanted to document uh, my private video journal and record uh, my testimony uh, privately uh, regarding covert gaslighting and uh, neighbourhood harassment, psychological violation and aggravation of my uh, personal space, aggravation of my rights, violation of my rights, aggravating uh, my circumstances being post-traumatic, post-traumatically stressed from a childhood violent assault which has been denied and uh, covertly managed as I've learned through hindsight and um, having this um, experience edified in my in my testimony and mind of the reality of this uh, covert activity which is denied and uh, winked at by uh, local authorities and uh, the conditioned general public of their ignorance and uh, brainwashing and social engineered state uh, due to their people's unbelief people's ignorance and people's unwillingness to uh, accept Jesus Christ and the truth. I want to <coughs> journal this privately because um, I, met, I believe mentioning this uh, as a public witness will reinforce the uh, the main objective of this uh, covert operation which is to aggravate and trigger my trauma that I self-destruct and uh, uh, there's been several attempts in that constantly uh, after every failure it's repeated until there's a success and it's to trigger anger and violence in me and not allow me any rest in my living circumstances, which are controlled by uh, Sentinel Housing, and I've already been targeted by them through second, third hand parties uh, hiring a cell to stir up a load of vulnerable, gullible people to uh, harass my family. And that happened after speaking out publicly against the corruption in. Sentinel Housing, the so-called fake charity, status, um, propped up by uh, City and Bank and uh, City Banker, City of London investors, ex City of London bankers, and their private investments in their, this housing association, who claimed, <coughs> after research and a report written by um, a councillor. Uh, exposing uh, their methodology it's just set up a, a charity pay that charity a loan and that, uh, the money that the charity earns is to pay back the uh, shareholders which is all the same head so it's a big scam and uh, if you speak out against them they they use dirty tactics and they have a lot of in influence and control and they had the local authorities in their pocket the local council bow to their will and they walked and uh, abused all lawful rights that they had and uh, tried to walk all over our family without any witnesses or without any legal support or without any community support and um, 
they brazenly abused and um, harassed my family and uh, deceived them and pressured them, worked on them and overturned a decision we'd made as a family to not accept this house which eventually we ended up accepting <laughs> and uh, to my frustration and uh, disapproval any, anyway, um, our original neighbours were uh, um, Kathy and David Shaw and uh, when we, uh, my parents accepted this house uh, these were our neighbours uh, about three years ago uh, Mr Shaw became ill and was um, hospitalised and the occupants changed overnight. Um, we were not close to our neighbours, we weren't informed of their personal circumstances. We heard through other neighbours of, of what had happened. And subsequently this young couple moved in and they, um, I remember distinctly their appearance. They never introduced themselves. Um, I was invited in by their sister, but it wasn't a good time and uh, I never really had any contact with them. Um, I don't know who they were. Uh, I don't know if they brought the house, if they were related to uh, David and Kathy Shaw. Um, so we had these strangers living with us who um, kept themselves to themselves, so I didn't know them personally. Wasn't ever introduced, I introduced myself, but uh, was all as up, up against um, just a wall of um, control really, you know. We speak to you, but you can't speak to us kind of thing. It's, it, it was, um, <clears throat> I was shortchanged. I, I I believe I don't I don't believe it was true interaction that, that uh, a human being would uh, behave like in any circumstances. Um, and then uh, they just disappeared. Um, now they were new in the area, and one day I observed. He walked straight out of his house and walked into, brazenly walked into the house opposite in a close, we live in a close. He called two people out of the house, they got in a car and parked in the close, their engine running. He, he went out the back door of that house, into another house, bearing in mind that all the people in this close were moved in at the same time. And these people knew after being here five minutes knew all these people so he walked out of his house this was like literally two or three days after he'd be, moved here he walked straight opposite in through the front door up the stairs got a bloke out who got in a car with a partner it's all these are all couples man young male young woman and then he went out the back gate of that house he didn't go out, come out, he went through the front door, up the stairs, and then he come out the side gate into another house, through the front door, called another couple out, they got in a car and queued behind the other one. Then he went into another house in, in the far left corner, so he went to one opposite, one in the far right corner, one in the far left corner, and another couple, young couple come out and they queued in the car. He got in the car, gave him some orders, he drove off and they all followed. That was the last I ever saw of them. Now they had distinct relatives. Um, the girl he was living with had a sister. I spoke to the sister, she, she was the one who invited me in. I distinctly remember her, her appearance and I remember the cars they owned. One was a BMW. A uh, silver BMW, a uh, silver Volkswagen, sort of saloon, sleek, modern, perhaps a Scorpio, I don't know the models. 
but a sporty, sort of like a like a Mercedes back kind of car, long slim bonnet. And he, his cars would chop and change daily. He'd have a different car every day, but he, they could have been work cars. And um, I didn't think anything of it at the time. And until I saw him leave his house and call those people out, and I thought that was rather, rather strange. But he knew those people instantly, he'd only been there five minutes. And they were all a very similar type and model of person. And I've mentioned this before at some time. And I, I personally believe they were either private um, investigators or private thugs, spooks, whatever, I don't know. But they weren't sincere and they weren't genuine to just suddenly know everyone in, in, in the neighbourhood. Um, these are all private houses, key workers' houses. And as far as I was aware, the original people that moved in from locally from this estate uh, and and other estates all brought their homes and uh, never never sold them. So the people that I thought were living there weren't living there. So it was all kind of fake. This is a whole fake estate, and um, I don't trust uh, Sentinel Housing. It's a state-run private takeover, and they're crooks and they they play dirty. Uh, very dirty um, and if you upset them they let you know it <laughs> it's like they make a vow until you they got their revenge and they won't let up which could be where it's all coming from perhaps but I don't know so these neighbours after the Mr and Mrs Shaw uh, moved out moved in then they then they then they just disappeared one day, but I noticed they didn't take their furniture, and it was the same furniture that the the original owners of that house, who brought that house when we when we uh, brought ours, or swapped ours rather, and they swapped theirs. It was uh, um, both parties owned their council homes, and they wanted to knock them down. So they offered um, new homes, replacement value and patient sizes, blah, 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 for a swap and uh, swap for swap kind of thing. And so those, those neighbours moved in the same time and then they became ill, disappeared and this new couple moved in. A few days later they, that, that odd thing I observed and they, they that was orchestrated for me to witness and there was a lot of banging on the wall metal work going on like they're constructing what I thought sounded like a indoor gym but there's a lot of heavy metal construction going on in the room against and it was against the wall and I thought what are they what are they what sort of framework are they erecting against the wall it's almost like a um, Heavy steel uh, girders, that are not not big girders, but like a roughly the what a steel old bed frame would be made of. That the steel that I know the sound the sound the ga that gauge of steel makes when it's clattering about loose. It was almost like a steel shelf they were putting up, and I wondered what was being constructed on what was it supporting. And I, and, my, and I thought, you know, my, my imagination was going wild, considering the covert, um, previous covert, over um, targeted and I'd face through uh, other covert agents who were tailing me and uh, hiding, I caught them hiding in the woods and they made themselves known to me in, at night. And uh, let me uh, know that they were there.
to know that they were tra what I why I assumed would, they were tracking me because they had a um, the ability to track me and tail me, and uh, people two people would be behind me, peel off, walk past me, peel off, and another pe two people will would walk onto the scene in in like synchronicity. It was very unnatural. So it's the anomaly stands out even though it's very subtly done and made to look like it was um, natural but I could tell by the behaviour of the characters that it was unnatural and they were behaving to be to try and behave naturally um, wherever I went it, it, it was it was happening to it, it, it and, and at the time of night I was walking in the streets you don't get couples out at that time of night it was like early hours in the morning so why why would um couples be walking out at three o'clock in the morning such a late hour it's not it's not a time i would uh, generally go out walk around the streets but this particular night i needed to get out because of this covert electronic harassment and that's when i discovered all the tales and all the the tagging and the um tracking and the voice to scar and the uh, control psychological control trying to control me and uh, pin me down and let me and then then all this happens this all follows it's a, a constant wave of uh, one thing after another one method after another anyway that couple vanished the furniture remained they just disappeared and I, I thought, oh, were they uh, spooks? That's when I started to put the pieces together, thinking, oh, they must be spooks. Perhaps they were erecting something on the wall, like a microwave energy thing or something, I don't know, x-ray or some equipment. I'd, I could be way off the mark, I have no idea. Um, but I was being cooked at night and electronically aggravated. and I could feel it on my skin and I could pick the signals up. Uh, currently I'm not really getting any signals but I'm getting I'm still getting warmed up but I don't know if that's my metabolism and the effects it's had on my body and my health I don't know because I can't see a doctor um, that couple vanished they just drove off and never saw them again the house didn't go up for sale it just went quiet and then uh, a few days later, early hours of the morning, I heard uh, rummaging around in there. And that went on for weeks. Um, but the house was empty, there's no lights on at night, no one in the day, and this went on for quite some time. And then suddenly this, um, I, I caught one of them spying out the window, and they, I saw them move out of the way quickly. And as soon as they... As soon as that happened, a couple started behaving like they'd been living there all their lives, and started like uh, speaking to me as though, as though they just that they'd moved in and introduced themselves. And uh, um, it was almost like well, and and again the furniture remained, and I thought that's odd. You know, the, the, these people were related, that they renting the house from them. Could be a case, but uh, why sneak in the house pretending that you're hiding? So when I spotted them, they made a public appearance. And, um... But this one, one person, this is the psychological operations, that he lied about a neighbour's car. And I subsequently spoke to that neighbour, and gave them the benefit of the doubt that they were in on it because they parked their house directly outside my front door see they got their own driveway but they park it straight outside my house to see if it aggravates me and winds me up but um it doesn't so <laughs> um but he said it was his car and i'd seen him in it but then i and but then i never saw it in, in it, the minute again and it's got a distinctive badge on it and then it then it then I saw another woman get in it from another part of the estate and then she approached me recently and said it's her car which I which I knew but I'd also seen other people in it the people who moved in turned up in that car and then it swapped 
So it was a psychological operation. So if I speak about it, they turn around and say, "Oh no, you," they deny it. You see, and I, I still don't know if this person's involved, but I suspect they are. But I, but I don't know. But that's the trouble when you've been uh, lied to and, and covertly, uh, whether whether for you know it, whether they there's a. It's considered a legitimate reason. It undermines uh, every, everything about your well-being. It's wrong. It's um, there's no excuse for it. Um, uh, you know, if you're a terrorist, they should um, make an arrest, or they should, you know, you should be, um, you shouldn't be spied on if you you've done nothing wrong. You're not a criminal, and you're vulnerable. And they must, they must be no, so so it's um, deliberate, and um, so they put that house was up for sale. Then the house went up for sale, you see. And this this um, second couple, with the changing partner, you know the the girl would change it. Um, you weren't a gigolo, but the the person that was uh, like showing that they were living there when I discovered them and then made a public appearance as though it was their house. Then the lights started coming on every every night. He started arriving publicly in his car, whereas before they were sneak. You know, I could hear him early in the hours sneaking in the door. I'd hear the door close and then somebody creep up the stairs. I thought that's a bit odd. Why? Why hide? Why sneak into your house and then hide in there in the day? So I thought, oh, more spooks. But when I saw them spying out me out the window, and I looked up from the back garden and saw them, then the public appearance. Then after a load of aggravation and electronic harassment again, which I pres I can only presume it came from that. Some of it came from that way, um, directly next door. And then they just disappeared. And then the new couple, and then there's another couple, but this couple that's present, again the furniture's not changed. There's an, there's an additional garden furniture, um, and, and there's been work done on the house and the garden. Um, but this current couple have the same cars as the original couple that called those other people out of their houses. But, and they're appearing in the same appearance, um, they look similar, but they're not the same people. The first couple were very distinctive, and I recognised them, and I took parcels in for them constantly, and um, I believe that was the <coughs> uh, so I was always taking in their parcels, they would never come round for them, directly, straight away. Uh, it was very strange to say the, say the least, and it make it, it makes you question your sanity because it's easy to play that 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 are totally innocent, and I, I you know I just can't believe that they are because of the activity, and I I'm the only one noticing it. My dad's completely oblivious of it, and uh, I'm aware of this uh, abuse and how. The, the methodology works and the psychological torment. That other guy, I believe, before this last couple, was the one who broke into the garage and switched the freezer off and left a little signal to show me that he, he'd infiltrated our house or, or the garage and left a, da a whole dandelion stalk uh, sharply cut off the stem without disturbing any of the uh, seeds and placed it in a deep crack in front of my garage just to just to leave a little token that oh look that was there when I opened the garage door so I knew and I was um, aggravated all through the night kept kept awake heated up so when I woke up and realised all my food had been spoiled and I you know my first thing well yeah that must be my dad turning it off but my dad didn't turn it off because it's, you wouldn't be able to reach the switch. 
and at least got no re he had no reason to use it. And if he did do it, he would he done it under duress because there's no reason for him to to use that socket. He wasn't doing any work. There's no it's electrical socket. It's right in the corner. Um, and at the time there was stuff dumped in front of the freezer. He couldn't he couldn't have possibly got to the switch. So that had been deliberately done. So this this present couple, whoever they are, for whatever reason, it's just continuing the uh, aggravation. Because it's um, it's unnerving. Because they're appearing, and uh, the daughter, the first couple had a distinctive the. the the female half of the partnership had a distinctive sister and she picked up parcels on behalf of their sister and uh, uh, you know I'd had face to face contact, close contact and she wore a distinctive coat, had a, a blonde hair, long hair and glasses and I, and this couple are to currently are appearing exactly the same identical model but they're different people wearing the same clothes driving the same car living in the same house and I think it's complete it's a complete cycle psychological aggravation and of course when they're confronted they just say oh no you're mad you're paranoid blah 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 so that's why I'm not going to mention it privately so I don't know what happened to that first couple or, or the other couple put the house up for sale or if this couple have generally brought it and coincidentally are driving the same car and, and appear as the same but that's a you know that's a long shot so it's a deliberate covert operation to psychologically aggravate me and that lives right, right next door and that's just going to wind me up trigger me every every single second because that's what the uh, psychological aggravation is designed to do just to gaslight me get me to react violently or aggressively because that's what um that's what aggravating a traumatized victim does it makes them angry and it will um psychologically stress them beyond breaking point and that's and, and they bring me to that breaking point and uh keep playing keep winding me up like with a stick so this is definitely uh, sociology in in action so i don't know who these are what their agenda is they can't openly say hey look we're, we're doing this on you you know this it, i don't know if this is a uh, private i don't know if this is uh, military i don't know if this is uh, hard guns to get rid of me or just a social engineering project, just an experiment because I've been deemed no good, and I, and and they got no conscience about uh, psychologically torturing a traumatized two-year-old who's never never received any treatment, and the diagnosis is purposely false because this uh, treatment is a, a well-known uh, fact. You traumatize a victim, they're stunted, and then you then you got power over them. They're a little bitch, and you're their uh, keeper, and that's how you're treated. You're stunted, and they're they're elevated. You see, self-elevated, like masons, eaten, and all that lot, <coughs> all that oik, who think they're born to rule, but they uh, they don't consider you equal. You know, they don't consider their role in life as unequal footing as the people they're supposed to serve and help. Um, so I don't know what the motivation is, I don't know what happened to those other people, but I uh, like to know, I, I'll find out in the judgement, the, the great judgement of, of the Lord Jesus Christ, what was actually going on, and um, I'll patiently wait for that day, whether I'm destroyed first or not, but but I, 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 I kind of, being on the end of it, just discern it as a... There's no logic or intelligence behind it. It's just solely to put people against me to destroy me. They may be given an, another reason what it's for, and I can well believe that would be a lie. That would be a false, um, 
false counsel to get somebody to justify their conscience for what they're doing so I'm either a deemed a terrorist or dissident against the British government which is complete bollocks I'm a, I'm a dissident against liars criminals and people who are against our nation and country and freedom and the, these people are all um, obviously pro-European because they're all invested in the uh, the long, the long-running conspiracy that is well documented. It's been well reported, you know, throughout history. What about these powers trying to, uh, you know, run the world? And they do run the world. And as the word of God said, Satan runs this world, and and he's got his uh, agents at the top with all the money. Um, and this is where it's coming from uh, directly. But it reaches me indirectly through many hands, and this is just the current, the the next wave of uh, targeting. I don't. I'd like to know what they've been told. I'd like to know what their justification is. But they obviously haven't haven't got the courtesy or the honesty or the the um, soberness or the substance to be open and truthful with with me. So I don't know how they justify it on their conscience, but they're. They're conscious that they're going to be seared and they're going to be judged by Almighty God because I'm powerless to do anything. I just got to endure it. And it, it, it is. It, 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 I have reached a point but where I can't take anymore. Uh, I'm just. Uh, went beyond the point of breakdowns. You know, I don't know if I've got any more breakdowns in me. Um, but by the grace of God, I um, survive each wave. I can't do it, I couldn't do it on my own. I'd have destroyed my dad, I'd have killed him. And and, and that's what they're just trying to do, to um, aggravate me so I get angry. It's what the devil's trying to do. And um, I wanted to record this just for the record you know in case anything happens to me and, and this evidence may or may not become available uh, um, so I wanted to document that um, psychological aggravation amongst the many psychological aggravations in this neighbourhood this controlled top-down neighbourhood where the people housed here have been placed uh, the whole communities um, somebody's idea that they put in an oven to see what comes out when you bake it uh, trying to forge a community um, all under the guise of it's to make money for the shareholders at the end of the day um, and since I was on the end of their corruption and their bullying, their abuse, their lies, their laughs, their taunts, their mocking, they're treating you like a um, subhuman, like they, their rights and walking into your house without even being invited, you know, disgusting, disgusting behaviour. So whoever these neighbours are, are spooks and appearing to be the as the first couple were and uh, living as though they're the same people and they're not. And I don't, I can't speak to neighbours because it it will just reinforce because it they could be involved and it will just reinforce the um, paranoia and the insult and the aggravation which is a trigger to my post-traumatic stress and the wound I, I suffer that I need respite for and a proponent is that, of that is that they have um, profiles on your family so they know how my dad behaves they know my dad's completely shut down so he him ignoring every injustice that goes on around me just further triggers me and aggravates me and makes me angry quite rightly and he's in complete de denial 
and he, he, he lives each day as the day before in that denial. And under my protests of um, conveying how much I'm suffering and that he could help me relieve and free me lawfully from this place without forcing me to sue him because um, I wasn't informed that I was a, sh uh, a shareholder. I was a, a full owner of a house that I don't even know if it's lawful, it would lawfully stand. Um, because we're all, um, he's currently the owner, but I'm a 100% joint owner, but I don't have any say in the matter and while he's uh, the executive. So my dad admitting to do anything, anything to do with the house or anything, I don't get a say in the matter. So my dad could drive the house into ruin and I'm a lawful, I'm a lawful owner of it. I got to pick up the pieces. And my dad's completely oblivious. I raise a concern. He, he, he just doesn't He doesn't want to know. He's just completely selfish. And that aggravates me. That makes me really angry. And that is preyed upon. And that is aggravated. And that, and that's the little game that they play. Aggravate the son. He'll hit the father or so they'll do something and they'll report it to the social services and they'll get it blah 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 blah. I've always had always had the already had the family round and other neighbours, oh we're concerned, blah 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 blah. And they're not genuinely concerned because you never hear from them and when you're in your genuine need and you seek their help, they don't want to know. And then suddenly when, when you don't hear from them from days and months on end, they appear as though they're concerned, it's completely fake and um, keeping up appearances out of fear out of fear of what people think of them for them not doing their you know chasing their con own consciences to uh, appease their own guilt but it doesn't wash because it's insincere um, so these neighbours exploit um, this, the knowledge they have on your family and the profiles they have on your lives and they know how families are going to react in any different circumstances therefore they will target the weakness of that individual my weakness is my dad's ignorance and my my vulnerability to protect myself being uh, traumatized and having that wound so these are weak feeble people who like to bully people you know I'd rather just get a knife fight if you want to kill me come and knock on my door and say I'm going to kill you and then and then uh, then then I'll have a chance to um, defend myself it be man I or man I, but no, these are spineless cowards who psychologically aggravate you, so the Lord will judge them. And I, I have to uh, meet evil with good, because I just want to kill them. I, I would just literally destroy them and tear them to pieces. I would let all my anger and frustration out on anyone. Uh, but I can't afford to do that, and I've got an I've got to stop myself preeminently from acting on that um, anger and that hurt and not retaliate. I've got, to, I've got to accept it. I've got to suffer it. I've got to take it like a man. And I, and I hope I do. Um, And that way, uh, Christ will give me the strength to um, endure this. And um, see the victory, see the, you know, see it. See it through to the end, whether that's my death um, or their destruction, their fall. Anyway, I'm going to close that. And I just wanted to note that. Um, my my neighbours and the psychological psychological aggravation and the technique <laughs> that I've witnessed <coughs> happening around me uh, continuously continuously and this is just a long stage in the phase of my uh, targeting uh, I'm still getting the fact the 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 tone it's played twenty four hours directly into the home I've got no escape I can't leave this house can't put it on the market, 
because my dad has the final say. And if I did have the final say, I would, if he didn't want to move on, you know, I wouldn't force him. So, um, held here, held, uh, holden here, three circumstances. And the omission of my dad's responsibility, so it's all fallen to me to burden on top of my own cross that I have to carry daily. And I can't cope with it. Uh, so that's the weakness they're going to uh, exploit and that's the one area I am going to be guarded against and I'm going to have my eye on the other areas of assault that will follow when uh, they realise that area is not not bringing forth fruit but I perceive they will continue in that area and try other aggravations through other hands and mediums. That would be the phone. That would be sending people around randomly. Uh, that would be stirring up people indirectly, whispering in their ear and uh, gossip, things like that controlling others to do the plant the seed and fan it so it uh, spreads a rumour or turns someone's opinion against you or sharpens someone against you with a certain profile who will react on that um, so many potential ways and avenues to uh, use uh, so uh, I'm going to close it uh, that's my journal, 26th of April, Friday, 26th of April 2019, the end.